Multivariable Calculus Section 14.4 Green's Theorem Part 2. A line integral over a curve equal to a double integral over a region? Shocking! So here's Green's Theorem again. If C is a positively oriented, smooth or piecewise smooth, simple closed curve, that is the boundary of a region R in the xy plane and functions P and Q have continuous first order partial derivatives on R, then the line integral PDX plus QDY is equal to the double integral over the region of the partial derivative of Q with respect to X minus the partial derivative of P with respect to Y over said area. Warning! Please notice this only works if it's a simple closed curve. Simple meaning it doesn't cross itself. Closed meaning it completely goes all the way around the region R. So the question is why does this work? And here's our plan. We're going to show that each of the integrals shown in red above are equal to the same sum of two single integrals one in terms of x and one in terms of y. Now a preliminary word concerning splitting regions before we begin our proof. Let's say we have a simple closed um, curve surrounding region R and we're traversing it counterclockwise. We are going to split this into two regions and now if we go if we do two separate line integrals the one on the right uh, that goes around the right side of the region, when we get to the dividing curve, we're going to go down and to the uh, right, and on, on the other curve, the other half of the uh, curve on the left, we're going to go up that same dividing curve, but we're going to go in the opposite direction up and to the left. So whatever's positive will be negative, and whatever's negative will be positive, and so the line integral along that dividing curve is going to cancel out. And so that means that the dividing curve is traversed in opposite directions. So um, it won't count. I mean, what we do then is if we take the entire line integral around the whole region, that will be the same as if we take two line integrals around the right and left half because that middle part's going to cancel out. And so we have the line integral PDX plus QDY is equal to the line integral um, around along the curve on the left, PDX plus QDY plus the line integral along the curve on the right, PDX plus QDY. And so we're going to be allowed to split regions into individual regions and then add them all together. And it doesn't matter how many regions we split it into, the same effect will occur. So there's the uh, part of Green's theorem that we're going to try to show here. And we're going to do two parts separately. Part A, we're going to show that the line integral PDX is equivalent to a single variable integral from A to B of G of X dx. And then we're going to show that that's also equal to the double integral um, on the region of negative uh, partial derivative P with respect to Y over the area. And then for part B, we're going to show that the uh, line integral q dy is equal to a uh, single variable integral c to d of g of y dy and that that is also equal to the double integral on the region of the partial derivative q with respect to x and then when we've shown those two parts then all we have to do is add those um, line integrals together on the left and the double integrals uh, on the right we add them together and so it would follow immediately that we would have proved Green's theorem. So let's keep it simple and for part A what we're going to do is we're going to claim that any region can be split into smaller vertically simple regions. So it will be sufficient to show that the line integral equals the double integral for one vertically simple region because then as we showed before we could just add all those together. And so for example here's how we could split this region into vertically simple regions. And if we show this is true for one region, then it follows it would be true for all the regions, and then we could add them all together and it would be true for the entire region all in one piece. 
So for part A, we want to show that the line integral along C of p dx is equal to some single variable integral. And then, uh, second part of part A, we're going to show that that same single variable integral is equal to the double integral of negative partial derivative of p with respect to y. So here's our vertically simple region, and we'll call the bottom curve f1 and the top curve f2. And then we have four uh, different curves, C1, C2, C3, C4, which we would traverse in that order to go counterclockwise around this vertically simple region. And so we can say that the line integral of PDX can be split into four separate line integrals since um, we've established that before. Now, um, notice that DX along curve C2 and C4 is 0 because there's no change in x. And so therefore those integrals are 0 and we can ignore those. And so what's left is the line integral of C, the uh, line integral on C of P dx is equal to the line integral along C1 plus line integral along C3. Now notice that this first curve we can rewrite P which is a function in x and y, we can rewrite that as a function in just x by replacing y with what it equals in terms of x, namely f1. And for the second line integral, we can likewise replace p of x comma y with p of x comma f2 of x. So now p is entirely in terms of x, and therefore we can go from a to b along the x-axis. So now notice that um, for the first line integral we went from a to b, but for the second line integral we went from b to a because we're, we're, remember we're going counterclockwise. And so in order to make that into one integral, we can switch the b and the a in that second um, integral and then subtract. And that's going to be a function, p of x comma f1 minus p of x comma f2 is a function in x, and we'll just call that g of x. So now I've shown the first half, that half's done of part, part a. The second half of part a is we have to show that um, that double integral on the right is also equal to the integral from a to b of g of x dx, so let's do that. We can uh, look at the region and uh, make this double integral into an iterated double integral by letting x go from a to b and y go from f1 up to f2. Now, the partial derivative of p with respect to y is the derivative with respect to y of what? Well, of p. And so that inner integrand becomes negative p of xy evaluated for y uh, going from f1 up to f2. And so when we substitute those, voila, we get exactly what we got before. So now we've shown that the second half of part A is true. Part B will be very similar. So for part B, again we have um, a region here, and C goes around it. And we want to say that regions can also be split into smaller, horizontally simple regions. So it will be sufficient again to show that the line integral equals the double integral for one horizontally simple region, because then all those horizontally simple regions could be added together and um, it would still hold true. So for example, here's how we could split this region into horizontally simple regions. So part b, we're going to show the line integral q dy is equal to a single variable integral, and then we're going to show that the double integral of the partial derivative of q with respect to x is also equal to that single variable integral. So here's our um, horizontally simple region, and again we're going counterclockwise uh, along c1, then up c2, then uh, left along c3, and then down c4. And so we can split our line integral of q dy into four separate line integrals. And notice that the change in y along c1 and c3 is zero because we're not moving up or down. And so 
those two integrals are just zero. So now we have um, our line integral all the way around equal to two integrals using curves C2 and C4. Now similar to before, Q is a function in X and Y, but along the curve C2, we can substitute F2 of Y for X. And so now we have it um, an integral just in terms of Y, and Y is going from C to D along curve two, uh, C2 as we move up. And the second one, again, Q is, is a function of X and Y, but along C4, we can substitute F1 of Y for X. But this time we're going down, since we're going kind of clockwise, we're going down from D to C. And so similar to before, we can combine these by switching the D and the C on the second integral and making it negative. And so that's going to be our H of Y uh, single variable function that we're integrating along the Y axis. So that's the first half of part B. So now we can iterate our double integral over this region by letting um, x go from f1 of y to f2 of y. And y is going to go from c to d. And the partial derivative of, of q with respect to x when we go backwards uh, with respect to x is just going to be q of x comma y. And so then we're going to evaluate that for x between uh, f1 and f2. So then when we substitute those into um, q for x, we get the very same integral that we got the last time. And so now we've shown that the second half is also equal to that single variable integral. Now combining part A and part B then, so far we have shown the following. The line integral pdx is equal to the double integral of the negative partial derivative of p with respect to y dA. And the line integral of q dy is equal to the double integral of the partial derivative of q with respect to x. And so combining the right and left sides by adding them yields our famous Green's theorem. Ta-da! Quod erat demonstratum, that which was to be shown. So what do we got here? We have a simple closed curve and the work done along this curve is equal to the region, uh, if we integrate along um, over the region, we're integrating the partial derivative of q with respect to x minus the partial derivative of p with respect to y. So I've shown a few of these little um, function values that we're integrating over the region. Now, notice that this actually equals the curl of the vector field in the direction of the z-axis. This is from section 14.1. So now let's take another look at curl from section 14.1. Review of curl from 14.1. Given differentiable component functions p, q, and r such that the vector field f is the vector with these components, then the curl of f is defined as del cross f, and here's the determinant, and when we compute that determinant we get this vector for the curl. Notice that it's made up of three components. So let's review curl from section 14.1. First of all, if we're in two dimensions, then there is no r. r is 0, and anything to do with r then is going to be 0. So let me show you that again. The partial derivatives of r are both going to be 0, and r itself is 0. And secondly, if we take the derivative with respect to z, all the derivatives are going to be zero because there's only x and y in p and q and so anything uh, taken with respect to z is going to go to zero. x and y are going to be considered constants. So those are going to be zero and so all that's left is that last component. And so the curl of a 2D vector field is just what we've been using in Green's theorem times k. 
So what we've been integrating in Green's theorem is actually the length of the curl of f, because curl of f is a vector, and we've been integrating the component of k. So let's look at Green's theorem again from this point of view. If C is a positively oriented, smooth or piecewise smooth, simple closed curve, that is the boundary of a region R in the xy plane, and functions P and Q have continuous first order partial derivatives on R, then the line integral on C of P dx plus Q dy is equal to the double integral on R, the region bounded by C, of the length of the curl of f. And so this is a Green's theorem in a nutshell. Now let's review, let's have a summary of this entire section 14.4. It's got a lot of stuff in it. The line integral p dx plus q dy on c it was derived from the line integral on c of f dot t, where t was the unit tangent vector to the curve c. And we've seen via Green's theorem that this, these integrals are equivalent to the double integral on R, the region bounded by C, of the length of the curl of F. Now, what do these integrals compute? Well, they compute the work done by F along the closed curve C. Now, the other big um, item that we studied in this section is the line integral on C of f dot n ds, where n is the unit normal vector to the curve C. And that was equal to, using Green's theorem to develop it, the uh, double integral on the region bounded by C of the divergence f. And these integrals, what did they compute? Well, they computed the flux, or flow, across C, when f was the vector field equal to the density of the medium in that region times the velocity vector of the motion of the medium in that region. Now I want you to notice a couple things. First of all, recall that curl f is del cross f and that divergence f is del dot f, so there's a relationship there. And then the other thing I want you to notice is in the first yellow box we're dotting f with t, which is the tangent vector. So you can think of the tangent vector moving around the curve. So that kind of makes sense that it would be work done around the curve. And the word curl, you're curling around the curve. So it's all kind of related. And then in the second yellow box, we're dotting f with n, the normal uh, unit vector to the curve, so the, the n is perpendicular to c. And therefore, you would think it means motion out of c or across c. And divergence f it measures the um, motion away from the points in the region. So again, you're moving away or out. And so these are all related. And um, there you have it. Now, if you'd like some more information and see another lecture on Green's theorem, the MIT free lectures are really good. And so if you'd like, there's the link. But psych, you can't, you can't click on a link during a video, can you? But it is in my um, PowerPoint if you go to Google Docs. So now, your experience may be like mine. You get a new topic, and you look at it, and you, hmm not quite clear. And so you think about it for hours, maybe days. Think about it, think about it, hmm. And sometime later, something will click and you'll say, ah oh, yes, it's trivial. Why did I have trouble with this in the first place? Such is the life of a math student. Have fun with the problems in 14.4.